Hi everyone, my name's Sam Ellis. I'm one of the judges for the Royal Television Society Devon and Cornwall Student Television Awards. I'm also Executive Director for International TV Sales at Lionsgate. Today I'm joined by one of the winners from the 2022 RTS Awards, Will Whiteman, who won multiple awards for the piece Heart Failure. Will, thank you so much for joining me. As well as the Best Comedy and Entertainment Award, you won Craft Awards for Writing and Editing, and Grace Emily Fortune from your team won for Production Design. How do you feel after such great success? Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me to chat. I'm really excited. It's It's been, yeah, really exciting. It was such a great night. Um, I didn't get a chance to find out about, about the awards till quite, you know, last minute because it came through the uni. Um, and I was just, yeah, really excited to go up and just meet lots of like, like-minded filmmakers and and Cornish talent as well. Cornish and Devon, De- Devon talent. I was, it was really exciting. And yeah, I was just very humbled that everyone enjoyed the film so much. And, you know, lots, lots of amazingly lovely words about it, which was, yeah, really, really nice to hear. And it's so exciting. Yeah, well, you deserve all of the success and all of the, the nice words that you've had. Heart failure is, is so fun. It's so funny, but also really quite poignant as well. Thank you so, so much. For those who haven't seen it, in a nutshell, what's it about? So um, the way we've been kind of selling it and describing it mostly is it's kind of a, a, a Gen Z musical is the way we've been trying to describe it. So it's like an e- or an EDM musical is the other one that um, a couple of people have been referring it to online. Um, it's essentially just we wanted to take... You know what is I think for the most part a, a fairly rigid genre uh, and take it into this new place with new music and new energy and then tell a sort of really um, a, a youth oriented story a Gen Z story which is about heartbreak um, and the kind of the journey of this character Frank who who yeah just goes through a relationship he finds love and then he loses it and he has to process that and it's just about that really and it's kind of you know it's not a very story driven film it's much more about just you know the music and the feelings that uh, that you feel at our age really is the kind of the idea of it. One of the things I really felt about it is it, it felt so well aligned in terms of the visuals, the storytelling, the humour and particularly the music. Can you tell us a bit more about the process that you went through of creating Heart Failure? Yeah, so, um, so I've always been a musician and a filmmaker. That's kind of been my I don't want to say USP because that sounds too, but my, that's always been, that's been my thing is that I, 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 oh, I love film, but I love music. And those two things are quite bound for me and quite sort of hand in hand. So ever, ever since I was first making films as a kid, I've always written the music and my sort of creative partner, Will Marchant, who's the DP and music producer for the film, we've always made the music for our films. So our films have always had kind of quite a musicality to them. Um, and so the kind of the idea came from just wanting to sort of, make a film that really just encompassed all the stuff we're really good at to make something that really like showcases. Cause that was, you know, it was our grad film. We wanted to make something that we could take out and be like, look, this is who we are. This is what we do. This is what we're good at. And so the music was a big part of that. So the musical idea kind of came from that a little bit. Um, so I wrote the music um, and the process kind of started with um, in garage band actually. So rather than a, it was, it was definitely one of the hardest bits of the film was trying to figure out whether to start with the the script or the music or a bit of both at the same time. And in the end, it was sort of writing the music and then visualizing it in my head almost. So I could sort of see the whole thing from start to finish. And once I had quite a clear idea of how the film was going to play out, I then sort of tried to turn that into words that I could then, because I, weirdly, I sort of didn't need a script because I was kind of just imagining it and listening to it. But the script was good for everyone to sort of get on the same page and everyone realized what kind of mental thing I was trying to pull off. Um, so that's kind of where it started. And then I used that music um, all the way through production. So we did a previs of the whole thing, um, which was like incredibly badly drawn shots that I did on paper um, and just took photos of my phone there, dropped them to my computer. Compare, and then w- also with a little bit of phone footage for the more complicated moves, so you get a sense of pacing and cutting. And we kind of used that. And it was really nice because we had the music, which is like literally a, a beat sheet. That was what we used to kind of block the whole film out really. Uh, and then those two came together. And then that same track that I, wrote originally we then took into production and when we shot that's what the actors are listening and singing along to and then they came back in afterwards sang their parts over the the visual kind of like um adr just watching the sort of trying to sync up and then yeah they 
we then reproduced the music from scratch with a proper dance track and proper music production and will got involved at that stage to kind of bring it to life and make it sound like a proper track so that's oh, a very wow. long answer but yeah <laughs> <laughs> no not at all. i mean it's you know obviously so well done and it really feels like every single second you know you've really really thought thought about i particularly like the silences as well and the use of silence that you had you know some moments were just of you know the, the characters talking on on silence or just nothing at all do, do you find that the use of silence is something that you consciously thought of or or is it it's yeah. something i guess that comes hand in hand with being a musician definitely i mean i think for, so for me there was there was a few reasons i wanted to keep it that i i sort of had a couple of mentors at the university and stuff who helped me you know with sort of writing it and stuff and uh, I, I wanted to have it as i mean the aim was to have it below 10 minutes but have it as close to 10 minutes as possible um for a couple of bits and pieces that i wanted that to be right for a few festivals and things and so it was a real target to get it to just keep chopping and keep cutting and and where can you lose space where can you use time and then balancing that weirdly with obviously yeah, like you say the music is because it's all very rhythmical trying to tell a story as efficiently as possible while also letting the music feel like it sort of ebbs and flows like it should and feels right like a piece of music as well and then yes yeah, so as you say like the, the the rhythm of that kind of came from the music but it was really important to me because so much so much of it is really high energy I did really want quite a lot to you know these just occasional moments that we just had had that space and that and that calm just to break it up and 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 I think because the rest of it is really manic those calm moments hopefully you feel a little bit more that was the that was the hope really it's really interesting that connection between the rhythm of the music and storytelling and film filmmaking as well it's really fascinating yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I, want, yeah. I wanted to ask you specifically about the writing process. One line I absolutely loved was catching feelings is the worst of the STIs. I mean, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know where that came from, but it's absolutely brilliant. I love it. <laughs> when you were writing this, the, the dialogue in particular and the music as well, did you think to yourself, I'm onto something really great here and I can feel it? No, I think mostly it was a feeling of this is, this isn't, I, this is the worst thing that's ever been made. I think that's the creative process for me was a lot of being like, this is absolutely dreadful. And then occasionally I'd come away from it and listen to it and go, actually, this is, this is working all right. I think I, I love the idea, but the, 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 at the bit that actually was the hardest was trying to get those lyrics down because you sort of write the music and you get the emotion of a scene, you know, what, you know what the moment kind of needs, but trying to get the, yeah, those, those exact lyrics that took ages and that was that was a real and I think if you ask anyone who's close to me in that time there was a lot of me just looking into the middle distance and trying to imagine what would rhyme with STI or whatever do you know what I mean like that was a lot that was a very a very tough bit but yeah I mean it, it's um it, yeah I mean I've, I've as I said I've sort of always written lyrics so I had a bit of practice in that but it was definitely the bit that, that just took just sort of trying again and again and again and again and just being like yeah and that, that actually as a line yeah catching feelings one was that was one of the last lines I put in because Again, I, I wasn't quite sure how um, vulgar to make it and how sort of sceptical to make it. And because obviously most musicals are quite sort of light and, f light and fluffy. Sometimes I'd be like, I really want to get away from that. And then sometimes I'd be like, but what if people don't like that? What if people watch it and think that's, that's horrible? Um, so, yeah, I think I'm, I'm glad we went, we went down a sort of darker route with it. And those kind of lines, yeah, came in at the last minute for sure. Filmmaking is, is obviously a very collaborative process and just just to call out one part of the the people you collaborated with the cast so frank was played by leon newman lizzie by izzy fryman and ali by harry hancock i mean they did such a great job uh, you must have been absolutely thrilled with with the work that they did with you how was it working collaboratively because i un understand that you created this during lockdown I mean, they are all incredibly talented people who do do not need me to make amazing work. Do you know what I mean? They are all wonderful people. And I was felt very lucky to work with all of them. Um, it was hard to find people, you know, just to sing their praise a little bit. It was hard to find people who could sing and act and understood. Because even, even for, for Izzy, who doesn't sing in the film, and she actually did audition with music because was, she did have a track at one point, but she, she still had to have an understanding of music and rhythm and, 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 and feeling those scenes. So they sort of felt emotionally and musically you know they, they balanced those two things but they yeah they were brilliant and they, the other challenge they had was yeah we shot in so we shot in may 2021 when restrictions were such that you know the uni had some slightly stricter rules because of certain how many people were trying to sort of get through and get films made so we had to shoot in a group of six constantly shot social distance that was kind of the 
the rules that we were under. Um, and so we kind of had a lot of camera tricks and stuff to get around them always being in the same room. But obviously it's a very intimate film. So for, for, for Lizzie and Frank, you know, Izzy and Leon, there's, there's, there's a lot of scenes where they need to feel very close. And so there was a lot of figuring that stuff out. And they did a lot of just shooting completely on their own. So for instance, the, the, the opening sex scene is shot with a mannequin. So there's no, they're never both in that scene at the same time. Um, if, to, to the point where they, they weren't in the house. They, they shot on different days. Um, so Lizzie came in on the Monday and then we shot with Frank on the Tuesday and kind of cut them together. And there's lots of whip pans and stuff. But, you know, to their credit, they never really, they're never bouncing off each other. So trying to get that chemistry between them was really important to me and was the bit that they absolutely just, should, it shouldn't have worked, but it, it somehow they, they really, they absolutely nailed it. Yeah, yeah. That's incredible about the mannequin. That must have been a very, very strange I think, thing for the I think that was the bit that everyone thought I really had lost it in a lockdown. I mean, when we could, I came out having written this thing and was like, guys, I know everyone, you know, has been worried about this project I've been talking about, but, but I want to do a musical and I want to shoot it with a mannequin. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I think everyone was a bit like, okay yes that's all right fine we'll give it a go and I think you know I had to you know push it it was it was it, it was it was an expense because it was a, a a wire mannequin so it it, it was like moldable so we could put it in whatever position was necessary and so it was yeah it was a <laughs> it was a very it was one of the most expensive things we bought for the shooting was to get this thing um and I, and I think it was one of those moments yeah when we were shooting it was like this this is not going to work. This is, and I, I definitely had a couple of moments where I just had to pretend that it was fine in my head thinking this, I might've made the biggest mistake in my life here. <laughs> and I have to ask, where is the mannequin now? Oh, <laughs> uh, this is one of my favorite stories. Actually, the mannequin is, we sold the mannequin um, to a lovely elderly couple who needed a scarecrow for their garden. And, and, and beautifully the scarecrow is that is near the train that I get home. So I, I can see from a distance, this, this mannequin that was in our sexy just rolls past the hills of the Cornish countryside. Um, so yeah. <laughs> the, mannequin, the mannequin lives on. I know forever it'll be in, it'll be uh, and they have absolutely no idea where it once was uh, and hopefully never will hopefully unless they watch this of course um, but yes um, that's that's where it is now if anyone wants to go see it <laughs> brilliant <laughs> so I, I must ask you so you, you've won the RTS student award yes how has it benefited you how do you think it will benefit you in the future obviously it's such a prestigious award well yes yeah, it was really massive to be there and obviously RTS was one of the big you know the big we really wanted to get into BFI future film we wanted to get to RTS you know these were these are the things we really wanted to get um and 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 you know the, we're watching the sort of award ceremony last year in lockdown being like we're gonna we're gonna be there next year we're gonna be there and so to get here this year has been and to win was just crazy and it re, and yeah as I say you say it's so prestigious and so exciting um and I, I you know I, I hope you know, I hope the film speaks for itself and that people watch it and go, you know, these, these guys have made something really cool and we want to work with you. And it's, it's, it's a career opportunity in itself, but the, but these kind of awards make a, a massive difference. And, and that, that kind of recognition is, is really important. And also, you know, the context, like talking, you know, you're, you're from Lionsgate. This is, this is, you know, a week ago, this would have been crazy. So it's, it's, these are amazing opportunities that I've just never would have had, you know, without RTS, without you guys, without the film. It's, it's, yeah, it's dream come due. Absolutely. Oh, that's great. That's really good to hear. And I finally, Will, I, I must ask you, what is coming next from you? Starting to think about a heart failure TV series in a couple of places and bits and pieces, which is exciting. Um, you, you, might, you might need that scarecrow. Back. Well, exactly. excuse me, <laughs> I need this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, that we've been doing that and trying to trying to think about that, um, just because people seem to like the sort of style of it. So you know, not not the same story necessarily, but something in that kind of EDM musical vibe. I think we can't wait to to see what comes from you next. So, Will, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a real thank pleasure you. speaking to you. Thank you everyone for watching if you haven't seen heart failure it's available online go and view it immediately i just can't recommend it enough uh, will whiteman thank you very much thank you so much for having me all the best